Hello YouTube, welcome back. In this episode we are going to be forging a miniature turning hammer as a retirement gift to my former tutor, Pete Smith. Uh, I'm doing this as part of a greater present of his final students, which we'll discuss later on. Uh, but first I am using 20mm round bar and I am using a length 40mm long of this material. So I will chop that off in the bandsaw and I will be working in the gas forge today. Equally you could do this with coke, there's no difference really. It's just the gas forge is a bit more convenient to light. So to start off with we are going to start to form the rounding section of the turning hammer. So this has a uh, semi-spherical face. So to do this I'm just rotating it in a swage. That possibly help if the swage wasn't quite so deep. And once you have upset one end and rounded off the other you can then use a smaller swage to dress those corners and make it look a little bit smarter. So it looks a bit like an air rifle pellet at the moment. So once that's swaged and squared off uh, I will just pop over to the flat face of my anvil and I will just dress that half rounded face as well. As you saw, the old swage I was using uh, is quite old, it's quite pockmarked, so I literally dressed out some of the marks out of it. So at this stage, you end up with something like this. So what I will do now is I will start to punch the eye for it. Now I'm doing this in the swage so that the back side of the head is protected. Uh, this didn't work out quite as well as I would have hoped because it did still flatten out. So the first few blows I will mark it and then I will go in and punch it properly afterwards. Like so. So I'm going to get it nice and hot and welly it nice and hard. Then with that done, apologies for the bad camera angle, but just pop over to your pritchel hole and punch the slug out. So then you end up with something like that. So with the blank for the head done I will make a couple of drifts for this. Uh, now this is just mild steel, it's nothing fancy. Uh, I'm probably never ever going to make another one of these again. Uh, so I'm not going to use the good stuff for these. Uh, now I'm making two of them, I'm making a 1 out of 8mm round and 1 out of 10mm round and all I'm doing is flattening the section to make it oval and then drawing a taper on it before going to the anvil and dressing that taper so that it's nice and smooth. Now here are the two drifts, so we will start with the smaller drift and we will do pretty much all of the final shaping with the smaller drift and then literally when the hammer is finished we will put the bigger drift through it. So bang that through there and I'm using a bolster for this to save uh, marking or deforming too much because the pritchel hole is quite big compared to the size of the eye so the bolster will just give it a little bit more support. And This is literally just a piece of mild steel with some holes punched and drilled into it. So what you can do with drifts is you can taper both ends and then you don't have to turn it around like I'm having to do here. Uh, for what these are I wasn't going to put too much work into them and like I say they're single use. So with the small drift in uh, I will then spread the cheeks lol, with a ball peen uh, over the bick. And the bick is purely there to protect the two faces of the hammer. So I'm looking for thinnish cheeks slightly spread out and then I will use a 4.2 or 3.8 I can't quite remember uh, arc welding rod and using the power hammer delicately I will just fuller in around the faces of this hammer so this I do love my power hammer because it is very controllable uh, might do a video on it one day 
as you can see I'm being quite delicate here and the hammer is very responsive so just following this I could have made a spring fuller but I figured that uh, just using the bar would be good enough and then what I will do is it's quite long still uh, and the fullers are quite wide uh, so what I will do is I will just pop back to the swage and I'll just compact the whole lot down uh, that will narrow those fullers uh, and spread out the faces a bit as well and just make it look a little bit more like the real thing so this is probably uh, somewhere between a half scale and a third scale hammerhead and you end up with something like this And at this stage I am just banging in that bigger drift to stretch the eye out to its full extent uh, because it did deform a bit with a smaller fuller uh, I knew that was going to happen which is why I made two drifts aren't I clever? So literally the bigger fuller will just get the eye to where you want it so then it's a case of popping over to the linisher and grinding up the faces Get it nice and smart uh, and then what you can also do is go in with a fine file and just radius those edges uh, because a forging hammer should have radius edges uh, it just leaves less marks on your work I did hear a story that German blacksmiths were trained with square cornered engineer hammers and it taught them to not leave any hammer marks so after filing and grinding what you can do and what I like to do is to just get another heat in there and just give it a wire brush and that will actually as you can see from the sparks it's an abrasive process so that will actually take out the file marks and the grinding marks uh, which is Taylor's top tip for the week so give it an all-round scrub get it nice and clean slightly shiny uh, what you can do when you're doing this is you can dip it in water uh, literally a split second and it'll blow any scale off not bothering doing it for this uh, but then what I did was I quenched it in oil, uh, proper quench oil, um, just to get that nice oil black finish that uh, a lot of proper hammers do have. So with that done it's time to make the shaft for it. So this is a piece of scrap oak that I've got left over from making axe handles uh, and I cut off probably about 10 inches of it and then, being mindful of my fingers, uh, I split it down to size. So I split it in half and took off a bit off the corners. So it helps having a nicely sharp axe for this. Then offer it up to the eye to see where you are. So I'm sure a lot of you lot who do woodwork will be horrified at how I'm working this. Uh, and then I just got it straight by cutting out a bulge in the middle and a bulge at the end oh, that's just a hewing exercise possibly not the ideal axe for this but there we go so at this point I cut a shallow taper on the end uh, nice and rounded that's approximately the same size as the eye and then I will just take the hammerhead and like a savage I will just bang the shaft through there and it will trim its own way for the eye. Now I wouldn't necessarily do this for a uh, working hammer uh, but for this purpose uh, it works absolutely fine. It saves me having to spend ages filing and trimming the eye to get it to fit perfectly. And then with that done I will take off the rest of the excess material with the axe uh, and I left the hammer head on there uh, purely so that I didn't cut into the eye material uh, and again my axe is nice and sharp so it's just shaving off exactly the amount I want it to shave off so this is something I do enjoy doing quite a lot so with it roughed out uh, I will then take a rasp and I will finalise the shape 
Now, I'm sure a professional carpenter could do this with the axe uh, and have a lovely result. However, I am but a scummy blacksmith. So there we are. At that stage, I just went on with some 240 grit sandpaper. Uh, now, oak is oak sawdust is carcinogenic, so I was wearing a mask for this. Uh, when you're working oak, make sure you wear a mask. If you don't want to catch long rot. Uh, and then finally I knocked the head off and put a split down there. Then reinstalled the eye. Then reinstalled the hammerhead. And finally put a wedge in place. Just like a proper hammer. So the wedge isn't glued into place, it's just friction held. Uh, this hammer will, in all likelihood, never see any work. However, knowing Pete, uh, it may very well be used. Hence putting a proper wedge in. So, and then the second final piece was just to cut off that wooden stub. And finally, coated the whole thing with boiled linseed oil. So a quick note, don't get linseed oil on your anvil like I just did because it stinks like hell afterwards. So a generous coat of that and then wipe off the excess afterwards. And here we have a miniature turning hammer. So this was a pleasure to make, uh, and it was a pleasure to make this for Pete Smith. So, like I said at the beginning, Pete Smith is was a tutor at the National School of Blacksmithing, uh, and he is actually the gentleman who interviewed me when I first decided I wanted to be a blacksmith. Uh, now his students uh, decided to make him a miniature toolkit. Now, Pete uh, has always dragged his tools around college in a shopping trolley, uh, which is quite ingenious. So the students decided to give him as a gift a miniature shopping trolley, and a lot of them made miniature tools to go in it. Uh, a lot of these tools are absolutely fabulous, lots of tongs as you can see. Uh, some clever chap or clever lass uh, made a miniature anvil with a steeled face as you can see from wrought iron. So we've got hammer making tongs, hollow bit tongs, bolt tongs, box section tongs, all sorts. Uh, quite incredibly somebody made him a little folding brass ruler as well which is absolutely fabulous. So I'm quite chuffed to have been asked to contribute to this gift. Uh, I am very very grateful to Pete because I wouldn't actually be where I am today without him. I turned up to my interview with a portfolio full of uh, knives, which the National School of Blacksmithing is about blacksmithing, it's not about knife making. Um, and just turning up with a portfolio of knives I possibly wouldn't have gotten a place there. Uh, however, I showed Pete all the equipment that I'd made to make these knives, like heat treating furnaces and that kind of thing. Um, and that impressed him enough that he gave me a place on the course. Now, I went to thank Pete at the leaving do on Wednesday, uh, and he said to me that there was no need to thank him. Uh, he knew that he was onto a winner when he demonstrated me a ram's head poker and I brought him back an elephant. So, thank you Pete and good luck in retirement. So, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging on till the end and I will see you all next week. Bye!